Hello, and welcome to the Alpha Male Podcast, the podcast where we talk about how to be an alpha male in today's culture and society. Today's topic is going to be on confidence and humility, attitude and beliefs. As always, I am your host, Michael Melito. Quick bio, first and foremost, I am a Christian. I make no apologies for that. It's first and foremost in everything that I do. This podcast is no different. The manliest thing about me is that I follow Jesus. Quick bio, grew up hunting and fishing in the backwoods of Virginia. Joined the Marine Corps at 17. Went to war a few times in the infantry in the Marine Corps. So combat instructor. Also after my combat tours, went to be an urban warfare instructor for the Marine Corps. After that, went to work for LAPD. Did several years in law enforcement, did regular old work in a beat, patrol assignments, and more specialized assignments. FBI certified firearms instructor, a bunch of other firearm certifications and awards and stuff like that. Uh, Successful competitive shooter, and all kinds of disciplines of shooting. Currently still in one of the branches of the armed services, won't say which one because I'm currently still in and serving, and work for day-to-day one of the three-letter government agencies, and I won't say which one because still in. So, enough about me, let's get into today's topic. Attitudes and beliefs, and confidence and humility. This is very much an alpha male topic and goes hand in hand with being that alpha male. Our thoughts, our words have power. Everything that we create in this world started out as a thought and as words. They started out in the mind first. Every building started out in an architect's mind. Every engine started out in an engineer's mind. Every successful business was an idea first. Then it was spoken out and created. We were created this way with our thoughts and words to have power. We're created in the image of God. God said, let there be light. And there was light. He spoke it out. So do we speak out our reality. Think about this. Whatever discipline it is, whatever athletic thing it is, whatever sport it is, anything from running to skiing, to tennis, to swimming, whatever it is. Any business, it's the same thing. Any endeavor. Think about the people at the very, very top. Think about Hussein Bolt. Do you think when he gets up to the line and puts his feet in the blocks, do you think he's telling himself, oh, I, I don't want to do this. There's no way I can do this. Look at all these guys. They're way younger and faster than me. There's no way I'm going to win this race. Do you really think that's what he's thinking? When Michael Phelps jumps in the pool, do you think he's thinking, oh man, I feel slow, slow today. There's no way I'm going to pull this off. I'm going to be the slowest guy in this whole pool. Of course not. Uh, The name escapes me right now, but the very successful Apple guy, entrepreneur guy, iPhone inventor guy, visionary, you know who I'm talking about. If you can remember, please leave it in the comments. Do you really think when he made the iPhone or had the idea for the iPhone, when he formed that in his head, do you think he was thinking, this thing's a piece of junk. Nobody's ever going to buy this iPhone. This thing's not going to work. Of course not. They all have confidence. When they step up to the line, they think, I got this. This is going to happen. Now, let's be clear. I'm not into the new self-help philosophy crap. Okay? So, unless you're a masochist or a sadist, You obviously want to be the best that you can be. You obviously want to help yourself and those around you. So if you could do it on your own, you would have already done it. Now, of course, as a Christian, I believe that all good things come from God. All talents and gifts and abilities come from God. We all need help from time to time. Who better to go to for help than the one who made you and formed you and understands you? Just so you didn't think this was some new age philosophy self-help thing. I'm going to tell you what brought this on, what got me thinking about doing this episode. I was at the gym a couple days ago. I was working out, and older gentleman, new to working out, he complimented me, and I said, yes, thank you, I'm very blessed. And he asked me what he could do for a chest exercise. Well, the iconic chest exercise is the bench press, and I stopped what I was doing, and I said, let's go over here, I'll show you how to do a bench press, I'll show you, I'll demonstrate it, and then we'll get you started on it. 
Now this gentleman, I put some weight on the bar, how much is not really important, but it, it was, judging from the man's size and knowing his age and his ability and his overall fitness level and what a beginner should be able to do, I put an amount of weight on the bar, a very reasonable amount of weight. And this gentleman looked at that bar, he looked at that machine and said, I can't do that. Now, of course, I didn't say anything. You respect your elders, and this man was quite a bit older than me, new to working out, but quite a bit older, and no doubt there's a great deal I could learn from that man. But it just blew me away that he would look at that. Now, think about that. He had never done that exercise before. He had never attempted it. There was an obstacle set in front of him. Why would you look at that and say, I can't do it? He already lost a battle in his mind before he even attempted it. And you know what? He didn't do it. He wouldn't even try it. Like was previously stated, it was a very reasonable about a, amount of weight. If he had got in there and thought that he could do it and attempted it, he would have done it. He wasn't set up for failure. Of course he lost that battle because he already defeated himself in his own mind. Think about any battle. Now, you heard my bio. Or there's a little bit of a military background there, but surely all of you can understand this. Morale is very important to an army, to an organization even more so than manpower and equipment. Now, all those things are needed. But study any military history, and you'll see that an even less well-equipped, smaller fighting force, smaller army with great morale is a formidable enemy. Even a so-called better, well-equipped army with more men that looks better on paper, without the will to fight, they're not much good. Now, there's always those negative thoughts that pop in. But are you willing to fight that battle in your mind? Are you willing to conquer that? Don't let your thoughts and that negativity rule you. Rise up as that strong alpha male. Wrestle those down. Speak confidence. Rule over your thoughts and even more so your feelings and your emotions. Your thoughts and beliefs will shape your life one way or another. If you say that you can't and believe that you can't, you probably won't. If you believe that you can and you tell yourself that, you probably will. There's been plenty of other times in life, uh, been at the gym doing a lot of weight, and somebody will look and say, I'll never be able to do that. And you know what? They never will. They most likely won't even attempt it. Being that alpha male being, means being in charge, being in control. How do you expect to be in control and have authority in the outside world when you don't even have authority in your own mind? The next thing I want to talk about is confidence versus cockiness. I think we get these a little bit mashed up sometimes like they're the same thing and they're not the same thing. Confidence is good. Cockiness is bad. Cockiness is just thinking that you're better than everybody else. Cockiness is thinking that other people owe you something just for your very existence. Cockiness is thinking that somehow because you're good at something, because you've been blessed with something, you're somehow more important and more valuable than other people. And that's not good. Now confidence. Let me explain this first. I believe as a Christian, I don't know how you could apply this if you're not, but I believe that everything that I have, every talent, every skill, every ability was given to me. It's a gift. I didn't give myself life. I was created. I didn't make myself what I am. God made me what I am. The Bible puts it simply, what do you have that you did not first receive? How then can you boast? If there's self-discipline, God gave it to me. If there's physical strength, God gave it to me. Every breath that I take is a gift from God. And it's good to be thankful and own what you have. An example is if somebody compliments me on something, I don't deny it. That's false humility. I don't say, oh no, blah, blah, blah. Say, yes, thank you. I'm very blessed. God is very good to me. That's confidence. When you step up to the line or step up to the bar or whatever it is, believing in greatness, not your greatness, the greatness of God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, the Bible says. Being thankful and appreciative of what God's made you and the talents and gifts he's given you. Let me hit you with this biblical smackdown. If you've never heard this parable of the rich man, the ruler that gives talents, this is Jesus telling this story. Now there's a rich ruler, and he gives every man a talent. And he goes away, and he comes back and, and asks them what they did with the talent. Each of them were given the same amount, one talent. 
And one man used it and traded it, and he got ten talents. Another man, five talents. And another man was scared and didn't use the talent that he'd been given, and he hid it. Now, if you're not familiar with the story, what do you think Jesus said? Do you think Jesus said, Oh, take the talent if you've got a bunch and, and give it to the other man who didn't use it and who was afraid? No, in fact, he said the opposite. He said, take the talent from him who was afraid and give it to the one who has ten talents. You see, if we're given something, we're called to use it and grow it and prosper it. Why be given something if you're just going to waste it? If you've been given a talent, a skill, and ability, it's a gift from God. Use it, grow it, prosper it. Be confident. Words and thoughts have power. If you've achieved something, denying it would be dishonest, and that's obviously not good. Be confident and be thankful. Tying into that, another misconception we have is humility. Now again, I'm going to go to the Bible on this. I'm going to go to Christianity on this. Jesus, the most humble man who ever lived, humbled himself to the point of death on a cross, was spit on, was beaten, was whipped, was stabbed. Humbled himself to the point of death. Jesus was humble. Nobody would deny that. But he never denied who he was. Humility is not denying who you are. In fact, that's one of the things that happened right before they sent him to the cross. They said, out of your own mouth you've condemned yourself. Your own words. When they asked him if he was the son of God, he said, I am. He didn't deny it. When Peter said, you're the Christ, the son of the living God, he didn't deny it. He owned it. Let me put it like this. Confidence and humility are not mutually exclusive. A good alpha male should be both humble and confident. But true humility should never include lying and denying who you are and who you were created to be. Denying the talents you've been given. This doesn't mean walking around, taking pictures of your biceps, selfies all the time. If somebody compliments you, don't put your head down and deny it. Here's an easy way to handle it. Say thank you. I'm very blessed. God is very good to me. Confident and humble. Here's another way to put this in practice in day-to-day -day life. Don't ever say, I can't. Unless it's something you actually can't do, like, I can't have a baby. It's okay to say, I can't have a baby, because I'll never have a baby. Don't ever say, I'll never. Instead, say, I'm not able to do that yet, but I'm gonna. Don't say, I can't find a good girl. Can't find the right one. Say, I haven't yet. No matter how much today's society and culture tries to steer women away from strong, confident alpha males, the plain hard truth is that women are attracted to confidence. Don't ever say, that's impossible. Say, I'm getting closer. Don't ever say, I can't. Say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4. Now, I've been throwing a lot of biblical examples at you. Let me throw this example to give you the power of the mind and the power of belief over the physical world and over the body. The four-minute mile. People thought this was impossible for decades, ever since they had been keeping track with watches of how fast people ran. They thought that the four-minute mile was an unbreakable barrier. People always got close, but they never, for decades, they got close and close, but they never bro broke it. They thought that it was a physical impossibility. Scientists, athletes, they thought it was a physical impossibility to run faster than four-minute miles. Then in 1954... A guy named Roger Bannister broke the four-minute mile. Obviously, he believed that he could do it. He was trying intentionally to break the four-minute mile. He believed that he could do it, and he did it. But that's not the main point. Only a few years after this, even though people have been trying it for decades, a few years after he broke the four-minute mile, tons of people had broken the four-minute mile. Several people had broken the four-minute mile. Because they knew that it was possible. They believed it. People didn't physiologically get any different in those couple years after than they had been for hundreds of years before. It wasn't their bodies that changed. It was their beliefs and their thoughts that changed. And suddenly, the four-minute mile wasn't even a thing anymore. It wasn't an impossible barrier. It was just a milestone. Now, as that alpha male... We're called to rule and reign in life and have control and have power and dominion. Whatever your picture of a strong alpha male is, they have confidence and control. How can you expect to have confidence and control in this world if you can't even have confidence and control over your own mind? 
Step up. Have confidence and control in your life, starting with your minds and your thoughts and your beliefs. Thanks for listening to the Alpha Male Podcast. A little bit shorter than normal, but very powerful, I hope, and very helpful. Stay strong out there, and thanks for listening to the Alpha Male Podcast. If you like the biblical Christian part of this podcast, there's also another one that uh, I'm very blessed to put out called Simple Man Sermons. Simple Man Sermons. You can find it anywhere you found this podcast. Um, if you like this podcast, have any comments, questions, suggestions, criticisms, please rate it and leave it in the comments. I'd be happy to read it, and everybody else can too. Thanks, and have a blessed day.